This is Vic. Vic was a lot of things over the course of his life. He was an engineer. He was a lecturer. He was a skilled swordsman. But most importantly, Vic Tandy was the greatest ghost hunter that ever lived. His story starts in the early 80s, where he worked for a medical manufacturing company as a researcher. Vic's lab was famous for being the site of a range of paranormal occurrences. Other researchers and interns reported feeling a sense of dread as soon as they walked in the room. Cold chills, unexplained sweating, increased heart rate, waves of anxiety and depression. Seeing dark, shadowy figures in the corner of their eye, they would disappear as soon as they looked at them and they felt a sense that something sentient was watching. This happened to Vic too, especially when he was sitting at his desk alone at night. On one of those late solitary nights, he was engaged in the traditional ghost hunter activity of polishing his sword at his desk. And he noticed that the very tip of his fencing foil was moving. Even with the handle clamped firmly in a vise, the sword was vibrating wildly, nothing touching it. So he's got shadow people dancing in the corners of his visual field. He's got dark feelings clouding his mind. And now he's got some sort of poltergeist thrashing his sword around. So what does Vic do? He doesn't run, he doesn't call the Vatican. Vic, being the man of reason and empiricism that he was, pulled out his acoustic recording equipment. It was less of a ghost and more of a frequency, 19 hertz to be exact. Now this is just below the cutoff for human hearing. It's a range that we refer to as infrasound. It was present all throughout his lab. Now infrasound has some pretty unsettling effects on the human body. It's been studied extensively by academia and the US military due to its ability to cause fear and panic and dread in human test subjects. Now its effects are particularly nefarious because the subjects are unaware of its presence. They just know they have the sudden intuitive feeling that something is very wrong with their surroundings. And it seems that the specifics of how that feeling is interpreted psychologically are heavily influenced by the environment. So for example, when researchers pumped infrasound into a concert hall during a performance, Listeners attributed their discomfort to the music that was being played. When it appears in an abandoned factory in the middle of the night, we tend to attribute it to evil spirits. Our body picks up on a threat, but it can't exactly identify the threat, so it makes its best guess. Infrasound may even have been responsible for the shadow people that were flickering in and out of existence in Vic's lab. The frequency he recorded just happens to be the same as the resonant frequency of the human eyeball. 19 hertz. So just like Vic's sword, his eyes may have been absorbing sound and vibrating. This could cause small, dark, blurry objects to occur in the visual field of anybody exposed to that sound. Now, Vic believed this could explain other paranormal experiences in the world at large. He visited other famous haunted locations like the cellar of a 14th century Benedictine monastery. He pulled out his recording equipment in a stairway that had a history of evil premonitions and apparitions, and boom, 19 hertz. He visited Edinburgh Castle, a spot saturated in 500 years of ghostly occurrences, 19 hertz. He took recordings in the London subway system, where passengers reported feelings of panic and ghostly figures, yep, 19 hertz. Now in each of these cases, the sound itself was probably produced by different mechanisms. In the monastery, it was probably vibrations from machinery in nearby industrial plants. In the subway, it was probably resonating vibrations produced by air that's displaced as the trains go speeding back and forth through the tunnels. But in all cases, it was mundane, physical, and measurable. And by no means can infrasound explain every paranormal experience on record, but it does seem to be a reasonable explanation for some of the more commonly reported ones. 
What Vic Tandy's work provided was an example of how unreliable our own human intuition can be at times. Our minds don't have access to the true nature of reality. We just have a few data points. Now, there are going to be situations in which we have significant gaps in the data needed to paint a full picture of the world around us. And that's where things like premonitions and superstition and maybe ghostly encounters tend to pop in. And in those moments, it might be best to take a deep breath and then take a handful of measurements and thank Vic for teaching us how to kill a ghost.